Uh, we're talking about identifying communication roadblocks. Uh, if we have handouts for those who did not have not gotten a handout, raise your hand. Um, if you have not gotten a handout, and and the usher uh, that have not gotten a handout from before, uh, from last Sunday <clears throat> or the Sunday before that, uh, just raise your hand, and um, Sister Rowe will bring that handout to you. All right. Uh, We're going to pray and we're going to get started. Father, we're grateful for this time together. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, creating us, Lord, a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. Bless now, Lord, the teaching of your word. We pray now for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Let something amazing happen in this church on this morning, God. Lord, free our minds, God, and free our hearts, Uh, Let us focus in on what you're trying to say to us today from your word. We love you. We thank you. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Let me me help you with something. Whenever I'm praying, stop what you're doing. Close your eyes, bow your head, and focus in on the prayer. Let me tell you why. Because we are corporately praying together. Amen. Always do that. Amen, because it's, it shows a sign of respect and re- reverence for God. Amen. All right, we, we stopped off talking about communication, right? And we, we talked about the fact that um, we must have a correct motivation uh, are essential to growing in your communication skills. All right? We talked about that what? That correct motivations are essential to growing in your communication skills, all right? So here's the deal. Um, If your motivations when communicating, right, is not correct, amen. Sometimes people communicate and they have a motive and their motive is to shoot the other person down or to uh, get at the other person or they're really trying to say something <clears throat> that they don't want to say. So what do they do? They go around the back door, right? You ever, you ever, you ever do that? <laughs> Amen. We, we call it diplomacy. Amen. And we call it, you know, trying to keep the peace. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. Sometimes the best way to handle a problem is go right at it. Not sometimes. All the time, the best way to handle a problem is to go after it. But here's how you have to go after it. You go after it with wisdom. Amen? And I told you that the motivation, amen, should should apply in every... The motivation, ultimately, in communication is to please God. Amen? Please God. If I want to talk to you, listen, and I know as couples you go through... Single people, you go through in your communications, and and, and what happens is we say things we don't mean. Amen. We say things that we don't mean, but in the moment of our anger, what happens? Stuff comes out, right? And what do we do? We damage the relationship. We damage the people around us. And as a result of that, Amen. We, we find that our relationships get worse rather than better. Amen. And so it's real important that, and I told you, uh, Roman numeral two, I told you that your attitude is critical to being an effective communicator. Your what? Your attitude. And it is the basis for what you say and do. Without the correct attitude. Your words will always, you ever talk and it just come out wrong? Come on, help me somebody. Amen. I'm not by myself. I mean, you really meant to say something else, but it came out. But the way it came out, it came out wrong, right? And as a result of that, you find yourself deeper into some other mess. Can I, can I get an amen? Amen. And, and oftentimes, we have to watch our attitude. Paul says that there's one attitude that we ought to have. Amen. And that attitude is the attitude that he says that we should look at. Amen. In him. If anyone has a different attitude, he says God will reveal. Amen. 
And, and I want to say to somebody here today, you, you, you may have said to yourself, I got a bad attitude. I want to say this to you. If you live with that in your mind, you're going to have a bad attitude. Amen. So I want you to go right here. We, we went here last week and I want to show it to you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14. Philippians chapter 2. Go eat popcorn. That's how you remember where, where Philippians is. All right. Go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Amen, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for helping us out. Boy, y'all's a tough crowd this morning, yeah? Philippians chapter 2, <laughs> verse 14. Remember, we, we did this last week. We, we kind of touched it, but I need to touch it again. All right? You know why I do repetition? <laughs> because sometimes the things I talk about, it doesn't sink in right away. Right? But the Word of God should, Right? He says, do what things? <clears throat> With what? Without what? Grumbling. And what else? Or disputing. Right? That you may prove yourself to be what? Blameless and innocent children of God above reproach, reproach in a what? In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you have appeared as what? Lights in the world. Now, Paul is talking to this Philippian church and he's telling them, listen, I believe that if our attitude is one that's always grumbling and, you know, we always got this thing going on in our hearts, you know what I mean? And we can't release the negativity. Why do you think, why do you think a person gets an attitude instantly? Anybody be around people like that? They're already angry. What else? What do you think? Why do you think people instantly get added to? And, and, it, and it, do, it doesn't take it doesn't take but a few seconds. It's what? It's their it's their defense mechanism. All right. Okay. What else? Huh? They have a heart issue. They have a heart issue. Right. They have not released the last offense. Amen. So, or the last offense, or the last offense. And, and it's a continuation of, I'm stuck now. So whatever you say to me, I don't want to hear it. I may cope in the situation. But until you sit down and deal with the situation, hello somebody, it will never get better. Do I have anybody? He says, listen, uh, don't do, don't do it with what? With, 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 do all things without what? Grumbling and disputing. Amen. Go, go to, uh, go, go to, go, go to this passage here for me. Go to Philippians chapter four. Same, same book. Philippians chapter four, verse <clears throat> Finally, brethren, whatever is what? Now, see, that, that's something that I want to show you real quick. What happens to a lot of people is we focus on things that are false. It's crazy how we gravitate towards the things that are not true. Things we make up in our minds. He says, whatever things are what? True. Whatever things are what? Whatever things are what? Whatever thing. This is what I call the whatever. <laughs> whatever is what? Pure. Whatever is what? So in a situation when you're communicating with a person, especially if they have an attitude, I want you to not just focus on the negative things that they say, or you focus on the negative things only, but but try to focus on whatever is what true. See, when a person responds to a lie and they blow up, that means they're guilty. Because here's the thing, if it isn't true, then why are you blowing up? I'm just saying, what's, if you accuse me, right, you say, hey, you stole my, my car. 
Why would I get mad when I know I didn't do it? (laughs) You follow what I'm saying? And so a guilty person will always respond negatively. You know why? Because they got caught. Do I have anybody? Paul says, listen, these things you need to think about. He says, watch what he says. He says, whatever's good, whether it was of good repute, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, look what he says. He says, dwell, what? On these things. Think about it for a minute. You know how you could stop a lot of negativity in your relationships? Stop dwelling on the negative things. The things from the past. Come on, y'all. And we know it happens. We cannot release it So therefore, we fixate our minds on it to the point where everything is negative. Everything is what? Negative. And that's how we develop a bad attitude. Maybe I need to do a piece on attitude. Amen. Seriously, I'm serious. And we're like, oh, well, no, I don't have, and and then here's the, I ain't got no bad attitude, but what's your thinking like? (laughs) <laughs> Amen. You're not thinking good case scenario. You're not thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to get better. You're not thinking, oh, man, you know what? It's going to be good. And I want to tell you something. Ask me how I know I've been there. I've been there that all I would point out, all I pointed out was the negative things. And I had to catch myself. I had to learn that you don't have to keep dwelling on those negative things, man. You got to start thinking on th- these things. Whatever is what? True. So, so what I always do before I go off, I think about, is this true? Because the devil will have you chasing a lie. How he does it, man. He lures you in. He baits you in with a lie. What'd you say about me? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there you go. You're in a whole nother realm. Come on, say amen. Y'all don't want to say amen. Amen. This is close to home. All right, now watch what I says he said here on the handout. If you don't have a handout, raise your hand, we'll get you one. Uh, I said this. The machine is down? Okay. All right, we have a guest. Does anybody have a handout they want to give up uh, to our guest? Amen. Please, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, what he says. Uh, Number one, do you have an arrogant or superior attitude when you talk to your mate? Arrogant or superior attitude? Does does your tone of voice reveal a bitter and resentful attitude? Do you have an indifferent attitude or do you make light? Watch this. Watch this. Not of your stuff. I'm about to say something else. But of their stuff. And you you use words like, you always. You always this. You always that. You always this. Whenever you get to that point, boo, you got problems. And you're going to be, listen, and let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. Then you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then you want to leave. But let me help you something. You're taking your same dysfunction to the next person. All right? So rather than sit there and work it out, we run. Today's society is deep, man. They don't teach us this stuff. They, they teach us to leave. You can work it out. Amen. Am I right? Go, go to that Matthew 22 and 5 for me. Matthew 22 and 5. Now, if y'all have any questions, now chime in. Now, I want you to talk back to me. As long as we're not rabbit trailing, don't be trying to take no pot shot shot at your mate and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) Talking about, yeah, uh uh-huh, I'm going to get you. Uh, Matthew 25 and verse (laughs) 5. Got to watch y'all. Is that 25? 22, I'm sorry. 22 and 5. What y'all doing? What does it say? What they say. Hmm? What they say. 
Go back up. We'll go back up to verse 1. Because we got to get the context. You know, what's a, you know what a parable is? Huh? No, it's a story that reveals a life lesson or, or, or a truth. So it's like an illustration. All right? So it's a story. And so like if I, I can illustrate, you know, use for illustration. All right? Go ahead. All right. And he sent out his friends to call those who had been invited to the wedding. Mm-hmm. They were unwilling to come. They were like, man, shoot, I ain't coming. Shoot, I ain't going to wed. Go ahead. And he sent out other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat and livestock are all good for me, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. Uh huh. But, but look at their attitude. This happens a lot. Watch your attitude. But they paid no attention and went their way. One to his own farm, another to his own business. To his own business. He's like, man, forget y'all. I don't, man, but, but watch this. No regard. I'm just trying to show you something. No regard for what, what the other person did. No regard the fact that, first of all, you were invited. Now, now this passage is about the fact that you and I were invited to be part of God's kingdom. Come on, somebody. And for a long time, we had an attitude. We had, listen, we had an attitude. We had a bunch of excuses why we don't have to come to church. Father, say, God been calling you. Come on, how many of God been calling you? Come on, somebody. He been telling you to come on. But you're like, every time you get the invite, you're like, man, forget that. I ain't, shoot, I ain't going that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't going. I ain't going to that. Now, just think about it. now. That's the that's the that's the truth of the of the parable, right? But I'm using it in the context of communication. Think about this, right? I want you to always think about what the other person has done before to prepare, and then all of a sudden you just shoot it down. I, I used to do that all the time. I used to have no regard for what people did. You know, I'm talking about like in my relationship, my wife, you know, she did something and I'm like, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like my kids, they say all the time, daddy, we text you. I love you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, my daughter the other day, she sent me this long text and I did sit, I, I did as a joke, I text back. Okay. But it failed to go through and I did it three times and it failed. I said, dang. So then I went on and, you know, I text record, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, listen, always think about what the person went through in order to make you feel accommodated. Or what, what did they go through to, to, to set all this up? It may not be something elaborate, but it may be something very small. But they went through a whole lot to get it to you. Y'all follow, y'all, y'all ain't following me. Y'all following me? Amen. We ain't got money to go out for Valentine's, but guess what? We made us a dinner at home. We got us some little, you know, dollar store roses and stuff like that. But the point is, don't just be like, oh, is this it? Is this it? And just think about how Jesus feels about us when he invites us into his family. And we're like, is this it? You know, that's the story. of they, They're like, man, we got bit. Look what he said. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm, the other to his business. Verse 6. And the rest seized his slaves and what? Mistreated them. And what they do? My goodness. But the king was what? Enraged and sent his armies and destroyed those what? Murderers and set their city on fire. Oh, Lord Jesus. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited, come on somebody. You don't want that to be your testimony at the end of your life. That you rejected every time God invited you. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. 
The next thing is, do you have an authoritarian attitude? Been there, done that. When making requests, you think your wife got to do it. She ain't got to do it. She, she ain't got to do nothing. I about to say something else. <laughs> Amen. She, she ain't got to do nothing. But if you ask with a good attitude, I promise you. I pro- and, then, and then let me talk to the women now. Okay, you can't be running when your boss asks you for something and when your husband says, babe, bring me some water. Go get it yourself. What's wrong with that picture? That's a bad attitude. I've been working all day, my feet hurt. Go get your own water. <laughs> Hold on a minute, but when your boss asks you, the Bible says submit to your own husband. I'm saying one time. Submit to your own husband, not, not the husband at the job. Because sometimes, you know, they got that new thing where they call them their work husband. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got that stuff going on today. And we got to be careful of all that. Or, or their work wife. Oh, come on and say amen. Got quiet up in here. Amen. Go to Proverbs twenty-five, fifteen. Uh-huh. I'm telling the truth. We working on this. We working on this, y'all. And you know what I love about this study? I've been here. See, I've been here, so I've been delivered from it. So guess what? And I'm still working on it. Amen. Don't get comfortable after you've been delivered. Because, listen, just like an addict, you can slip right back. That's why we need Jesus. Hello, somebody. Come on, somebody. Twenty-five, Proverbs 25 and 15 says what? Mm. Mm. Do you not realize that every time you cuss, it doesn't make the situation any better? Every time you say hard things, but if you were to just be soft, and I'm not talking about fake soft. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about you doing it because, okay, mm-hmm, yeah, uh, mm-hmm, yeah. No, I'm just talking about that. I mean, your tone is, now, now I'm about to lose the spirit now. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. You don't tell the person that you're trying to talk to in a soft tone. I'm going to lose the spirit now. You know, I don't had enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. That don't work, y'all. That don't work. That don't work. What you got to do is you just have to be kind. Answer. Listen, if you answer, if you answer in a soft tone, if you answer... Hallelujah. In such a way where the person is like, man, this is how relationships get jacked up for years. And I, I want to say this. I want to say this. It's time for us to stop pretending that we don't really have problems in this area. Because a lot of marriages are being torn apart. A lot of people, live, they're just living together. They're living together. Just tell the truth, man. They're just living together. They're not happy. Did you get married? Did you really get married not to be happy? I, I would think, right? Watch this. I would think, here's what I would think. I would think that the, the longer you're together, the better it gets. I would think that. I would think that the more years you go together, that you're drawing closer together. But it seems like it's like a flip. Seems like the longer you're together, the farther apart you become. Unless you apply the principles of God's word to your marriage. To your relationships if you're a single person. You understand what I'm saying? And here's the thing. He says, a soft tongue breaks 
What? Why are we naturally inclined to be harsh? Oh, how I brought up. You're a new creature in Christ. You have a new nature. You have a new heart. You have a new mind. Now, I know you need to mature some. I already know that. But if you and I were to apply these principles to these everyday situations, we'd be better. Watch this. Next thing is, are you disrespectful or impolite when responding? First of all, you ain't no position to threaten nobody. Hmm. Boy, is that all? Is that the best you got? Seriously. Go to Ephesians. Chapter 5. I'm going to leave that alone. If I go there, I ain't going to be no good today. So let's just go there. Let's go here. I still got one more to do today. I'm opening you up, but I got to sew you back up. So so I I don't want to do it twice. You you know, and I said this uh, two weeks ago. And you know why I'm doing this too? And I'm glad that we're putting it on Facebook because I'm using this for, for counseling tools. I'm, I'm, I'm actually having couples go back to the Facebook page and hopefully it'll be on, the, on our podcast. And this is their homework assignment. Their homework assignment is to listen to this stuff and start really doing it. You can sit here and listen to me all day, but if you ain't doing none of this stuff, then what's the point? Right? Ephesians 5.25, right? But I said something about Ephesians 6 when I started this. And, and this is the thing that you got to remind yourself of constantly. Your battle is not with flesh and blood. But oftentimes we make people the object of our fight. It's not them. It's powers and principalities in high places. So when you think as that person... It's not that person. It's not the person. I promise you it's not the person. It's a spiritual, it's, it's not even the spirit in the person, it's spiritual warfare. And rather than retaliate, you ought to slip away, God, I'm going to put on this full armor right now. And I'm going to pray. I don't know what my husband's going through right now. I don't know what my wife's going through right now. I don't know what my child's going through right now. I don't know what this person's going through right now. But God, I'm going to pray for him, God. I'm asking. Listen, the power of prayer works. The next time you go to go off, go and pray. Amen. God knows. Are you with me? Watch this. Watch this. What does it say? Huh? You like that, don't you? <laughs> you like that, don't you? Let's back up to 22. Let's get the context. Go to, let's get the context. Let's get the context right quick. You got to get the context. Can't get the context. Can't, can't read the text without the context. Because if the text doesn't have a context, it's a pretext. And if it's a pretext, it's really a pretense. Amen. You got to be careful. Now read verse, verse 22 again one more time. <laughs> Ooh. Now, now watch this. Let me show you perspective real quick. A lot of wives say, I ain't submitting to him. I don't want to submit to him. But he didn't say, submit to your husband as to your husband. But I got a sneaky suspicion that you're not even submitted to God. You can't talk about God to your husband if you ain't first submitted to God. You can't submit to your husband if you're not submitted to God. It's impossible to do that. Let me tell you why. 
because of the curse. The curse of Genesis 3 says that your desire will always be to usurp authority over your husband. Always. In other words, you're going to want to wear the pants all the time. For real. That's the curse. But in Christ now, when you submit to Christ, you are now, you, now you have the capacity to submit to him. But you're really submitting to God first, then you submit to him. See? So, so he may, you know, you're like, man, I can't submit to this man. Submit to God and you'll be able to submit to him. Because look at the next part of the verse. Man, I love the scripture, man. I love the scriptures. The scriptures clear it up. This ain't stuff I'm making up. This is stuff right here in the Bible. Am I right? Is it something I just pulled out the air? No. That's why I tell people, if you ain't ready for marriage, don't get in it. Because you got to, well, you should. But if you're submitted to God, then you can submit to him. And when people tell me I can't, I'm telling, you know what I tell them? You're not submitting to God. Amen. Watch this. For the husband is the what? As Christ also is the what? Who's the head of the church, y'all? Hmm. Y'all thought it was the past. Let me show you the, the, the picture. I am submitted to Christ as the pastor. You then submit to me. Hello, somebody. But you are also submitted to Christ. And because you're submitted to Christ, you can submit to the pastor. P people that have a problem with the pastor, they ain't submitting to God. Because God placed me as the under shepherd under the, under the shepherd. So when you submit to me, you're, really sub you're submitting to God first and then you can submit to me and then it's an orderly arrangement. That's what the word submission means. Submission means an orderly arrangement. So when, you, when the family is off, off kilted, when the relationship is off kilted, somebody's not submitting to somebody and somebody's not submitting to God. So, so you may show up to church, but if you're not totally submitted to God, watch, watch this. The man is supposed to do this, pray for his family. Just like this. The wife comes in front of him and she submits to God and she submits to him and then the children follow. That's called an orderly arrangement. Just because your children is acting right doesn't mean they're submitted. The question is, are they developing spiritually? Are they growing in virtue? Are they growing in, in godliness? See, that's how God set it up. I didn't set it up that way. God set it up that way. He says, as what? As the, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of church, he himself being the what? Savior of the body. You know, you know what happens when you place yourself out of the ordinary arrangement? You put yourself in harm's way. That's why he says he's the savior of the body. What do you think happened to Eve? She put herself in harm's way when she entertained the voice of the serpent. Amen. You talking to everybody else but your spouse. About everything that's going on. When those outside voices start coming in, you you heading for trouble. Don't you confide more? Well, you understand. You don't confide more in outside sources. Amen. Watch what he says next. But as the church is what. So also wives ought to be to their husbands in what? Everything. 
You don't know what you're talking about. You ain't never did that before. <laughs> you, don't tell, you don't tell me what to do. I, I know what to do. It says in everything. That's the bottom. Everything. But pastor, you don't see, and whenever you say, but, you don't understand? The Bible says what? Everything. In everything. But remember, you submitted unto the Lord, so you are trusting in the same God that he's trusting in. Watch this now. So that you can trust him to make the decision. And then you make it together. A lot of men try to please their wives to keep them quiet. Let me just tell the truth right quick on y'all. Yeah. Well, if I, if I keep giving her this, she's going to be quiet. If I keep giving her this, and you ain't fixing the problem, you just, you're just band-aiding the problem. Because you know she got a bad attitude, but you keep rewarding her. And so what she's going to do, she's going to continue to have a bad attitude to get things. But if you show her through God's word, baby, we got to submit to one another in love. I don't, I don't, I don't want pink carpet. No, I don't. I know you love pink. Okay. But can we come to an agreement together in love? No, I want my way. Ah. See what I'm talking about? And so a lot of men, what we do is we give in so we can, shoot, it can shut down. And some of us are not like that. I'm not going to say what type I am. All I'm going to say is I win some and I lose some. That's all I'm going to say. But I'm not the type to just lay down. I'm going to tell you like that. I, I think, here, here's what I think. I think rather than just say, go along with it. I, I, I think that you say, is this the right decision for us? And, and listen, if you really listen, you'll see that your husband doesn't want bad for you. He wants good for you, right? So it may not be the way that you want it. You follow what I'm saying? But, if it, but I want you to always think about the outcome. Are you going to accomplish the same thing? A man wants to feel like, He's in control of this thing. You follow what I'm saying? And, but, but watch this. And you're telling him, oh, all you got to do is jump right here and you can do that. But he wants to go the long route. Make him think he did it. So if you know that the outcome is going to be what you're going to get anyways, okay, baby. Go for it. Hoorah. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Let's do it. That's wisdom. You find what I'm saying? Now, now watch this. But as you're submitting to God, God will show you. Oh, yeah, he's not, he, he's not trying to hurt me. He's not, you know what I mean? You know, men just like doing stuff the long way sometimes. You find what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you know, you see that? Am I right? You know, you see, you know we, we, we just like to do stuff. That we, and we want to feel like, here's what we want to feel like. We want to feel like we are appreciated. For what we do. But oftentimes, we don't get it. See what I'm saying? And now here's the thing. And so, therefore, we get into this struggle, a power struggle. See, we get into this power struggle. And once we get into the power struggle, we ain't laying down. It depends on who we are. And then eventually we give in. And we're like, all right, cool. Whatever. But we got that right here. But we ain't dealt with it. 
It's right here. We, we, keep, we, keep, we keep records right here. Follow what I'm saying? And that's why the next thing you say sends us through the roof. See? Look at this last piece and we're done. I'm going to use my whole minute. Husbands what? Love what? Just as what? Just as what? Just as Christ what? And what? All right. So, so here's the thing. What the passage is really talking about is that the husband is wired and requires to some sense respect. The woman is wired for love. But here's what the problem is. You ready? We don't know how to love. We love with conditions. If you do this, I'm going to love you. I'm a, if you do this, I'm going to love you. Conditions. We feel like, and I, I got stats for this. We feel like if you don't deserve it, we ain't giving it to you. If you've been acting a fool, running your mouth, saying all kinds of crap, I ain't giving you nothing. But that ain't love. And here's the, here's the other problem with us. You ready? Now, I'm going to say this. This is for real. Until I discovered this, I was able to talk to my wife, sit with my wife. I took It was after a locker room meeting. That's why you got to come to the locker room. Okay? And I took her out to eat. I said, baby, I'm sorry. Because I don't know how to love. I don't. I didn't. I did not know. I thought love had you... You do something, you get love. But my, our men, me our idea of love is lust. That's why after everything go down, we want to get a little cookie. See what I'm saying? Yeah, after you know, after the fight and all that kind of stuff, because that's our way of saying I love you. That ain't love. That's pleasure. <laughs> that ain't love. <laughs> You understand what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? And, 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 and I'm going to leave that alone because we got some kids in here. But I'm going to say this to you. As a man, you got to ask yourself a question. Heard say, this is what heard say. Y'all ladies sleeping on heard. Heard got, heard got something. Heard say you got to make love to their mind first. That's what heard said. I, I'm quoting Right? But you got to know how to make love to their minds first. Amen. But us men, we don't know how to do that. We think we know how to do it. But we mess that up. Because we want to bring the sex thing in. Eventually. And then your wife is mad and she's like, I ain't feeling it. You know what I mean? Then you're like, oh, it's been two months. It's been three months. Follow, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you, you, you're like, man, shoot. And that's how other things start looking better to you. Oh, yeah. That's what happens. Amen. Then you mess up once, and then you keep messing up. But if you learn to love, the Bible says, love the wife of your youth. Love her. But we got to pray, Lord, teach us how to love.